Okay, welcome back. We're going to work on making a constraint for the environment now. We've already done depth and distance and license. So I think we're on to the fourth and possibly final criteria. We might do uh, unlicensed, or not unlicensed, significant discoveries later. But for now, we are going to create another shape file, and this one's going to be a polygon file. And once again, you can add a, uh, an attribute table to it, or an, a field to it, I should say. Perhaps this field will be called uh, whale uh, type. Perhaps, perhaps this is a whale breeding ground that is of concern. And uh, there you go. Add it to the list. There we go. And we'll just go continue. And we'll make a name for it, and it'll be called oops, Enviro Mint. Uh, environment, sure. Uh, let's just call it that. So basically, this is a whale breeding ground or something uh, for some endangered species, and we need to make sure that so any any wells in that area are are deemed unsuitable. Well, they're not unsuitable, but there's a greater risk that you could endanger. You know, you don't want to be harassing these poor animals as they try and mate because they're already endangered. So there's added levels of concern there. So once again, we have this. This file now it's in the uh, in the layer field here, but it doesn't have any geometry yet. So we're going to add some geometry, and we click on toggle toggle ed bleh, bleh. <laughs> toggle editing. And as you can see, we get our little pencil there, and we're going to start making a feature. Now before we do that, we're going to want to zoom into the area where we're going to make the feature, so we can get it nice and somewhat of a of a real shape. So we're going to zoom into uh, the southern southern section of the North Sea here. And we're going to make a nice file. As you can see, these green circles are wells under 50 uh, meters, and the other ones are just unlicensed wells. And so let's just uh, click this big button up here that's Add Feature. You can do some uh, some stuff later, but we don't have that stuff yet. So essentially, we're just going to make a shape. Uh, and, and you can make your shape however you want it to be. We'll just start making uh, some sort of a shape. I don't really. I'm not really following any real facts here. Maybe it does a little loop like that. And maybe it does a little loop like this. And when you get to the end, you're just going to right click and you'll have it done. So the ID will be 1 and the will type will be Beluga, we'll say. Although that's probably not realistic, but we'll say Beluga. And ta da! We have a field now in the environment layer. We'll click the. You can actually move it too if you would like, as you can see. So we can move it around, and you can edit the nodes, which I don't know why you'd really want to, but you can. So you can bend it and stuff like that. In the end, you just want to save it. You click Save. Oh, hold on. It's still saving here, I guess. Uh, and I guess, yeah, it didn't really. So that will save it. There you go. It's saved. So now let's move the environment layer down to here. And there you go. So that's your environmental constraint. And uh, we could we could color it a number of different things. Probably, I'd almost like to give it a bit of a, a different. Let's see, what can we do with this guy? Maybe we'll give it a, a diagonal fill or something. Something like this, maybe, with like red or purple, actually. Ah, uh, purple's too too similar to the background, actually. Uh, maybe yellow. Not sure if you'll be able to see that, but whoopsie, so went the wrong way. So we'll back out. So there's our environmental constraint, which you can't really see from this distance because it's hidden behind all the wells. So that's it, guys, for making that. That was actually pretty simple. It's quite a quite a nice little tool. And so that's. Uh, is that all we have to do for the environmental constraint? I think so. And so essentially, if we just zoom back in there, I'll just talk about this for a second. All the points that are within this region, all the wells that fall within that region, are deemed unsuitable, essentially, uh, because a Jip oil company doesn't want to deal with the expense of having to worry about the risk involved. So I think that's it for the environmental constraint, and then I will... Let's. I will consider now 
if we're going to do the uh, significant discoveries. And one thing you should note about this data, this data, this data is fresh. Like the significant discoveries data is from November 2012, and the actual well files are from December 2012. And this file is repeatedly being updated. Like we started this project in November, and so we got a file in November, and now we've got one in December uh, for the wells file. And so it's it's constantly being updated, and I'm, I'm presuming when we hit January, it'll update again. So it's pretty awesome dealing with some real data. Okay, welcome back guys. It's time to get very excited because we are into the elimination stage of the project. I've decided we are not going to do significant wells because uh, basically for, for a couple, well, for one main reason, just because they may be significant in that they're probably more profitable, it also means they're going to be more expensive, which means they're probably out, out of the range of, of Egypt's budget. So we're not going to include them, and they didn't really provide any extra variability to the to the study, it was more just like duplication of what we already done. So I decided it wasn't really worth uh, worth doing. So instead, we are going to do um, we're going to start limiting well. So the first criteria, let's pop over here, in back to the wiki, which we haven't really looked at yet because I'm kind of doing this separately of the wiki. We got. Uh, this is the order of elimination. We're going to eliminate licensed wells first, then depth of well, then distance, and then environmental region. It's basically how this is going to go down. So basically, we've already eliminated the licensed wells. So here's the unlicensed well file, and we are left with, out of an original, I think, 11,000 some wells, we're down to 6,090 wells. Now we are going to, from within the licensed wells, we're going to get rid of those wells that are below. We're going to take a stab at this and try 50 meters. So let's do that like we did before. Um, advanced search. Water depth less than 50. We'll test it. The test says 96. It's a pretty small number. I think that's probably pretty good. Uh, let's okay that. So 96 features are selected, and we will go back out here, and we'll make a save the selection as, uh, we could save this as a number of different things. Maybe I'll call this 96, just to, I'm not sure if there's a minimum length, seems like it should be, and I think that's what we want. So I'll add 96 to the attribute table. And there she is. The top 96 wells, according to location, according so according to license and depth. So uh, maybe I'll take a screenshot of that now. Hold on, let me just zoom to there. It might already be to this layer extent. Uh, hmm. Let's change the color of this so it's a little bit easier to see. I like green wells, they're very, very nice and bright. Okay, I'm, uh, Okay, we're back. Uh, so basically, I just had to take a screenshot of that because we're putting this on the wiki. And uh, so that we're down to 96 wells now. Next thing we've got to get rid of is either distance or environment. Distance. There are actually... I can turn London on here because that's kind of important. There are no wells within two longitude latitude of London. So that's kind of interesting. How about... This I, I once again I presume that's long, longitude latitude, but there are some within within the, that polygon. So let's do a difference on that, and we'll get rid of some more points. Uh, Geo processing. Uh, we want a clip, I guess. Say, eh? 
we want the ones that are inside, not outside. We're going to clip 96 by buffer 4. Because that's buffer 2, that's buffer 4. And we'll call this one 96 zone 4. Or buff, within buffer. Within, well, 94 with distance. With a distance of 4, we'll say. Yeah, that's, that's a great title. And we'll okay that. We'll add it to the layer. Did I miss something there, or are we having issues? Oh, no, it's right side of the map right there. I can see it. Ta-da! Look at that, eh? So there's our blue ones. Narrowed down by distance. And they'll see, are there any inside that little area? Yes, there's three that we can eliminate from that. Based on the environmental constraint. So we'll do that too. Uh, and we'll do a, that'll be a distance, or a difference analysis. So let's do that. And then that'll be the final elimination, I believe. And then we'll have our remaining points. So difference because we want what's, sorry, I'm dropping my phone here. I don't know if you're hearing that. Uh, that with distance around the whoops around the environment output shape file will be 96 with distance and in viro there she goes perfect. That's it, guys. So let's check out how many points are we down to now. We are down to 37. So we have narrowed this down from over 11,000 wells, plus I think there was originally 16,000, if you count the onshore wells, down to, down to 37 wells. I'm pretty happy with that result. And I hope that AJEP Oil Company will be as well. If we take a look at uh, some of the attributes, too... Water depths. Some of these have depths of zero, which is interesting. Thankfully, the water depth, we didn't get any null values. But all those depths are below 50, which is pretty awesome. And they have no operators, as you can see. And that's that's about it, guys. I think that's it for results. Uh, maybe we'll just zoom in and get you a better look at what's going on down in here. So, these are our closest wells. Maybe we'll change the color to, I don't know, what's a great color for final red, perhaps? The red points there are our final points, all 37 of them. They're good for shipping. And uh, so so thanks for watching this walkthrough. Uh, I'm not, if this is going on YouTube, then if you have any questions, then you can comment. I'm not sure if it will be or not. And uh, I hope this, this was a good introduction to Quantum GIS. And once again, this is free to download all the software. You can do this by yourself if you just want to learn the software. Uh, you don't have to pay to you know, go to Carl Carlton or anything. You can just literally take, do this in the comfort of your own bedroom. Uh, uh, I hope this was uh, in, a good example of what you can do with the software. Anything else I have to say? I'm pretty happy with the result, to be honest with you. 36, 36 wells is not very many. Pretty awesome. I'm pretty pumped about that. Okay, guys. Thanks. Have a good one.